and things got really bad with the company at, at one time and I was I was losing money I had high turnover um, my mind was in a mental fog I didn't know how to run everything I had about eight I had about 80 employees at that time and I was like I this isn't gonna work and I was so scared to tell anybody that I didn't know what to do anymore that I had grown to that point that uh-huh. I didn't know how to go to the next level I didn't know how to keep managing things it scared me to death and I was afraid that if I told my leadership team or my managers and stuff that I didn't have the answers that they would go well then we're out of here We have Michael Hinderleiter from Power Wash University, and we're live right now on the Untrapped podcast in Fort Worth, Texas, at this amazing event and exposition. Michael Hinderleiter, this is the guy right now. If you're in the green industry, lawn care, landscaping, pressure washing, soft washing, window cleaning, I was just sitting down and we were eating lunch together. I'm like, man, you've scaled multiple business to t- businesses to $10 million with 80 employees. And then I find out that this guy actually He's been through some tough times, and that's what I want to put him on the spot on this podcast right now. What's up, Michael Hinderleiter? Tell us about yourself. Sure, sure. Been in the power washing business since 1985. Uh, Was fortunate enough to have my dad as what you would call the OG, (laughs) as as a lot of guys refer to. And and when we were a few years ago, you called me the OG. I said, well, really, my dad's the OG of the OG. Right. Because he started out in 73 in the power washing when it's in its infancy. And so I had the opportunity to get into power washing um, because I went to his business and learned how to fix equipment and repair it. And as have it in high school, kind of button heads with dad, want to do my own thing. But he saw an entrepreneurial spirit in me and he encouraged me to go out and do that and um, got me started with my first power washer. So I went out and started doing fleet washing on the weekends. Worked my way through college. Um, After graduation, did a few job interviews and realized I just had the entrepreneurial spirit. Didn't want to work for somebody. So I kept washing, doing fleet washing, got into kitchen exhaust cleaning, and eventually uh, bought out my dad's business, and that's where I am today. Oh, that's where you are today, huh? (laughs) Yeah. So over 36 years uh, as a contract cleaner. So we still do the contract cleaning besides selling equipment and doing training. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, how did you get here, and what did you go through? Specifically, when we were sitting down, there's, an, a whole, there's a whole yeah. event going on inside there right now with a few hundred people learning and growing. Uh, Joshua Latimer, Brandon Vaughn, Bobby Walker, mm-hmm. and uh, Jason Guyman, and a lot of great minds in there. And we're learning a lot. But when I was talking to you, you said agoraphobia yeah. that you went through. That's a big deal. Yes, agoraphobia. 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 I, I apologize. Yeah. So when I was in college, uh, actually... It actually started when I was in high school, and like a lot of guys, I had this concern over getting to date, and I was kind of shy, and for whatever reason, I wasn't, like I didn't have a problem talking to you or socializing with people, but um, I had a long-distance relationship with a girl that lived in another state, and so when I went to see her, I had all this mental buildup before I went to see her, and when I was there, before I left... I ended up throwing up. I was like, what is wrong with me? Why am I throwing up? That makes no sense to me. And, and, I, and my mind just kept playing that back over and over and over. And as I thought about it, I kept thinking, well, what other problems are this, is this going to create? And I get nervous because I realized it was because I had thought about it so much. And then I get more and more nervous and more and more nervous. So as I went into college and stuff, it expanded and it grew. And I became agoraphobic to the point that if I knew I was meeting somebody new, I would get super nervous. Or if I knew I had a social situation I had to be in, I got extremely nervous about it. And I would get, I would get to where I couldn't eat. I, you know, my hands would get sweaty and um, I would get chills. Even though I was sweating, I would chill. I'd be cold and sweat's pouring off of me. So the, those kind of things were happening. And I, and I realized I was getting to the point that I didn't want to get out of the house anymore. But I had all this turmoil inside me 
that wanted to do things with my life and I wanted to go travel and I wanted, you know, I wanted to date and have a girlfriend and all that kind of stuff and I wanted to meet people. But my mind was telling me you can't because you're going to fail. People are going to think all these bad things about you. You're not going to say something right. So eventually I just like, I got to get help. I got to do something. And I was listening to the radio one day. And I'll never forget the name of the program. I don't think they're around anymore, but it was called Tear Up. And they were looking for people to join in and get coaching on how to get over agoraphobia. They didn't call it agoraphobia. They called it something. It's just social anxiety. That's what they said. But later in my life, I realized there was a term for it, and that's when I found out it was agoraphobia. And uh, so I joined this group. It was a really small little group. And they gave us this book, and we worked through it. And one of the things that really profoundly impacted me in that learning was that we, a lot of people that suffer from it, are very hard on ourselves. So outside it, we don't really listen to everybody's compliments or how you're doing or you look great. We completely discount all that. And we're like, no, we're not. You missed this right here. You didn't see that. Or, um, and just, we are our worst critics. And we get so into our mind at being our worst critics that, um, and it's taken me a long time to get past. That helped me a lot going through that program. But once I got through that, I started realizing well, if I can be my worst critic, why can't I be my best cheerleader? Right? Oh. And encourage myself to do good and be a good person and be thankful for um, what I do well. And when I fail, recognize that that failure wasn't a loss, but it was something to build off of and to take to the next experience. Mm. So over time, I became less agoraphobic and it, and now I can get up and I can talk in front of a room full of people and not totally freak me out and not be able to sleep or eat for five or six days like I have in the past because um, we started PWA. I was on the board, so I had to present at the first event. You started what? For the Power Washers of North America. Yeah. Was started in 1993. What are the websites associated with that real quick? Plug all that real quick so people know and then yeah. go back to your story. Power Washers of North America is a nonprofit association that my dad started back in 1993 to have help power washing contractors. Great, great association. Um, and I was a founding board member of that association. The first event was about 250 people, and I had to go speak in front of them. And for three days, I didn't eat. For three days. And then I have to present. And I remember at a later event, of course, I, it took me years to get through this, and... It was probably eight to ten years later. I was I was actually president, still struggling with this. And one of my friends come up to me and he says, "Michael, you don't look so well." He goes, "What's going on?" And I wouldn't tell him because I was ashamed of it. And it wasn't until I could admit and get over my pride and tell people that I had a problem was I able to really let go of it and move forward. Because it had to get to the point where I accept who I am and I don't care or worry about what other people think. That's not easy to do. That's hard. Especially when you can be... We can allow pride to take over our lives. And that's what I, I was so prideful. I didn't want no one to know and I didn't want them to be able to get in to that thinking that I had and possibly use that against me. You want to hide all the time. No, no, no. You know what? That's who I am. Embrace it. Dude, you just, you're just you making me think so much. <laughs> and, and amen to what you're saying. Like uh, yeah. Qu Quentin Howell, my friend behind the cameras right now, uh, yeah. he's my friend who's a filmmaker. Uh, we're out here in Texas, and we're working together, and we got a hotel room together. And we're very, very close friends. We don't get to hang out much. So I literally found myself just talking about all these things um, last night, and then I'm going and beating myself up, saying, "Why was I talking so much? What was I saying? Am oh, I being gosh. completely selfish? Oh yeah. my God, I'm talking his head off. I should be asking him about his life." And and, it's, yeah. and all these things where you'll you'll you go into a scenario, and then you'll overanalyze the way you acted, or, or was I appropriate? And yeah. I think that. So how do you, in business, in being a, a team leader and mm -hmm. developing culture? Because uh, 
in scaling human behavior, how have you taken what you've learned and then learn how to do that to scale a business and be a great coach so you can have employees do work? And, and mind you, pressure washing, uh, power washing is, there's higher profit margins and things like that. If, 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 if you wonder, if you're outside of the industry and you're like, what is this thing about power washing? Why are these guys so gung-ho about this? If you're in the industry and you see, like this is a huge community of people that are, that are, are, are uh, crushing it. I'm just saying that there's a lot of opportunity in this. So, uh, Yeah. Um, there's great margins in power washing mm -hmm. and knowing how to run your business and do that kind of stuff. But to take what that experience I went through and how to apply that in my business, I think it taught me to how to be more personable and to be transparent in who I am and recognize where my strengths are and allow other people that had better skill sets to do different things within the company. So one of the other huge epiphanies that I had when I was running the businesses was part of that, that pride and thinking that I always had to have, <clears throat> excuse me, I always had to have the right answers for people and that I had to be quick with my responses and I couldn't think about it very long. I needed to, I thought that's what being a leader was. Like you had to know. And if you didn't know, people are going to lose confidence in you. And so when it was a huge struggle for me for a while, and, and things got really bad with the company at, at one time, and I was, I was losing money. I had high turnover. Um, my mind was in a mental fog. I didn't know how to run everything. I had, about 80, I had about 80 employees at that time, and I was like, I, this isn't going to work. And I was so scared to tell anybody that I didn't know what to do anymore that I had grown to that point that uh -huh. I didn't know how to go to the next level. I didn't know how to keep managing things. It scared me to death. And I was afraid that if I told my leadership team or my managers and stuff that I didn't have the answers that they would go, well, then we're out of here. But guess what happened when I told them? Huh. They were like, you're real. You're human. And we got this. We can help you. You let us do what we need to do, and you do what you need to do. And it grew from there. And then, and then the, the relationships got better. The morale improved dramatically. And if I was wrong, I would admit I was wrong. And before, I wouldn't do that. I would, like, make lame excuses or blame other people. Um, so now I'm very quick to address when I do something wrong because I want my staff to know it's okay for them to admit when something's wrong or they did something wrong. I want to hear it because then it gives me the opportunity to coach them if I can help them or point them in a direction where they can get help. And, you know, obviously when it comes to the technical side of cleaning and doing all that, I'm a whiz. It's like the back of my hand. I know it. I can help you with that. It's simple. Um, and then with some of the things I've struggled with in life, when that comes up, then I can, I can be a, somewhat of a personal coach. You've got to be careful with that, too, when it comes to HR, what you can and can't do, and um, between male and female and all that, too. You be very careful. And have the right person on your team to deal with those as well. I've got a great HR lady that is phenomenal. Um, when you've got a, a business at our size, you need a good HR, safety and all that. So it helps a lot. I'm just absorbing right now. I'm chilling. <laughs> like, I'm thinking about the parts of myself. And if you you watching, like, are a control freak, afraid to let go of control. I know. Oh, uh, gosh. I'm watching Brandon Vaughn's new yeah. YouTube channel, uh, Map to a Million. Yeah. It's really good. And he told me one time in person at another, uh, like, a, an event that he sat down with somebody. And he they had him write the word control on a piece of paper and rip it up to tiny pieces. <laughs> And he, like, was sobbing and crying. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about that stuff. Uh, I saw you on YouTube, too. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, Powerwash.com. 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 I saw you were yeah. standing in front of, like, uh, big receptacles, and you were talking about how to – it was like a training video. I don't know. It was really high quality. Go to Powerwash.com. Put links in the show notes yeah. below here. Make sure you go there. Subscribe and check it out. Yeah. Um, All kinds of stuff on that channel. Yeah. So – this event right here, um, talk about this event. Okay. And talk about the next event coming up and where it's going to be and okay. why people should attend and what okay. they can learn sure. and what can they take away. 
So at this event, our first day was focusing on <clears throat> business and improving your business, being able to like scale the business, um, a lineup of speakers to bring their different skill sets that they could share with those that were attending. And a lot of them have programs they can offer. So if, if, you, re if you really want to grow your business and take it to the next level and you don't want to spend a lot of time learning what someone else has learned, which is what I would recommend doing. Because I think about like back when I was like, I'm 36 years in business and all the things that I did. And I started like going through the processes that some of our speakers were talking about, how long it took me to learn and go through those. Anywhere from five to 10 or 15 years to just do some of the things that they were talking about that their program offers. And I would just have to pay a monthly fee or a one-time fee for them to help me get through it. But, I was, but we get so focused on trying to save 10 bucks or $20 or $100. <clears throat> it's like, hey, guess what? I can build that machine cheaper than, they, than I can buy it from you from. So I'm going to buy all the parts. I'm going to build it. Why? Why would you do that? Why don't you go buy it from someone who knows how to put it together, who knows how to make it run and last Instead of spending your time building it when you should be out building your business and getting customers and creating revenue to grow that business. So that's, so if you, if you want to think about it like this, uh, <clears throat> the hierarchy to survival, what's the first thing you need to have to survive? Food and water. Mm -hmm. And then shelter. But you've got to eat and you've got to have water, right? That's what a business, that's what sales is to business. It's the food and water. And then once you get that and you start consuming, then you build up the other things. You build up your protocols and your systems and things like that to put it together. And that's what we're offering here. The owner is usually one of the best people to go out and get that going. And eventually, once they build it up, then they could hire sales staff and create sales systems and put programs in to bring in the sales. But you've got to have that first. And you need to be your primary focus as a business owner is just creating that funnel that feeds the business all the work you can get for the business and then put the systems in place and have other people help you do that as much as you can. And that's what we were doing on the first day. And then today goes into technical. Ah. Yeah. So like now we're teaching like wood restoration today. We're going to do paver sealing. Um, we're doing outside demos. We did dumpster pad cleaning outside. Um, and then we're going to demo equipment and things like that for people to get a, the, more of their hands on. And then, so we, we announced a new program we're rolling out, which is called Washaholics. So only the people that were here today can get in on the ground floor and this absolutely amazing price we rolled it out for. But eventually we will start offering this to the public. So the people that are here become my tribe for creating and building this program at this upper level that's going to be so awesome. And then we'll start creating more things off of that and branching out with the Washaholic program. Where's the website people can go to learn about this? <clears throat> uh, it'll be Powerwash Academy. We just changed the name from Powerwash University Power or Powerwash U. But it's going to be, it is powerwashacademy.com. We haven't launched that website yet, but we are. And I got to be. So what we found out is that with. We oh. wrap it up. Very <laughs> <All right. laughs> Okay, so we'll leave it at Powerwash Academy. Flip it over so people can see your name. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Michael Hinderleiter. Right? Michael Hinderleiter. Hey, r real quick, I want to ask, say one thing. Mm -hmm. Look in the camera, Quentin. Which camera should he look in? Right here. Look in that camera, and I want you to, to like literally <laughs> go. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. This has been an awesome episode of the Untrapped Podcast. We're on all major platforms. Go to KeithKelfis.com or go on uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Deezer, uh, Deezer iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. Please go and leave a positive five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show. It boosts the ratings. And thank you so much. Subscribe and check out Michael Hinderleiter. I want to see you yeah. at the next event. You're the man. I appreciate it. Dude, thank you, man. Keith. Love you, bro. Peace. <laughs>